Let's bring up the Honorable Joe Hannon. He's going to come up here. And I just want to point out, he's a former podiatrist. Look at those boots he's got on. Your feet have got to be frozen. <laughs> thank you, Ben. Yeah, not the smartest thing I've done today. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you for sticking around. Uh, I'll keep my three-hour speech as short as I can. I'll try to cram it into the next two minutes or less. Um, this is probably the one place on earth where someone can show up with, a, with an overcoat, a tie, a jacket, and cowboy boots and feel underdressed. I forgot my rifle. So I apologize, but uh, I'm glad everyone came out today because uh, I don't want to repeat anything that's been said, so I, I'd like to just talk about something specific to how we can further the Second Amendment fight. Now, we, we've heard a lot of talk about how we can Attack, go after our legislators and stand out here and rally, get on social media, all this stuff. But one thing we have to do is we have to consider our angle of attack. Now, the other side is very good at changing their message. Now, we don't have to change our message, but we do have to change the way in which we present it sometimes. And I think that's important because I've been on, but this is my first term in office here, and I've been on both sides of the table in, in, a, in a committee. And I can tell you, the first time I came to talk as a citizen, I got up and started talking about my rights, the Second Amendment, the Constitution, and how dare you. That summarizes what I used to say. That only works for the first or second speaker. After that, they don't hear us as much. Now it's important that we, we stick to our message, but if we hear a hundred people saying the same thing, it does become a problem. I know this isn't very popular right now, um, but if we can come up with one or two points, I'm just giving you my perspective as someone who's been on both sides of the, the table in this place. It needs to be, your voice needs to be heard. Showing up is as, is as important as anything. And everyone here, I'm obviously preaching to the choir, but it's not just about showing up and saying about the Second Amendment. We have to go at this from different angles sometimes. Talk about the statistics of specific instances, like Emily Sandblade's son. Everyone has their own style. Not everyone can get up like Kimberly and lay into them. Uh, that's not my style. I'm a little more genteel, I guess, and that's in, in, in my approach. But you have to do what works for you. We have all kinds of uh, styles here. I mean, we have some people that are wearing multicam and some that are wearing real tree. Uh, everyone's unique. <laughs> and we have to take those things that are unique about yourselves and you, everyone here has a strength that we can add to the Second Amendment fight. So we all don't have to do the same thing. I do show up dressed well. Now, as a, as a reminder, well, I think so. And I've, I've gone to dozens and dozens of rallies like this all over the country, and I can tell you there's one time where I was wearing ripped up jeans, old boots, an old army jacket, and had a long beard. That was the only time a reporter put a microphone in front of my face, and I jump in front of every microphone I find. So the public has an impression of us. The reporters definitely have an impression that they want to get on the news. Now, I'm not saying that everyone has to shave and put on a nice, you know, outfit when they show up. Show up like yourselves. It's fun to show up and do what we're doing today, and that's great. But on a day-to-day basis, when we're fighting for the Second Amendment, when we show up in committees, it's great to have an NRA pin or a hat or something like that, but we have to present ourselves in the environment where we're trying to fight, because we've convinced each other. We don't have to tell anyone else here what we believe. We know what we believe. We have to convince everyone else. And every time we show ourselves in public, I think that's important to remember that. It's not just about us, it's about the children, it's about our grandchildren. And we have to be able to sa sometimes sacrifice things for ourselves. Believe me, I'd rather be uh, wearing camo and face paint and running through the woods having fun over the weekend than dressed up like a monkey in this place. But I think it's important that we all find our niche, we all find our style to deal with this fight, and we stick to it and work together. And I thank you all for coming today and listening. Joe brings up a good point when he talks about imaging. In the beginning of his statements, he talked about the language, that the, the, the gun grabbers co-opt the language. They do a very good job of it. I've often said that we cannot co-opt their language. They don't call homicidal maniacs shooters. 
because it's just a convenient word. They do that because when some homicidal maniac does a, does a, a horrible act, they use the word shooter because they don't want that image of granddad with a Mackinac and a 1022 plinking. They want Adam Lanza in your head. We're shooters. We're people who enjoy the sport of shooting. Don't let them have that. Do not let them call homicidal maniacs shooters. You correct them on that one. Crook TV.